Hello and welcome to this uh, new channel. My name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland. And, um, well, this is my first stream on Twitch. Um, well, uh, I have uh, decided to come over here from, from YouTube just to see how they, the water is uh, over there. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do some coding because that's uh, that's what I do. So I'm, I'm going to show my inability to write proper programs to the world <laughs> and hopefully get better at it. Um, so, uh, hello, Monica. I see uh, Monica in the chat. Welcome. Thank you for being there. Uh, what, we, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to start um, writing some code for a DIY stream deck. Uh, something that's going to run probably on a Raspberry Pi. I have, uh, I don't know if I can show it on the camera. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're going to see something. This is the official 7-inch um, touchscreen display from the Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, in a 3D printed enclosure that I designed and, uh, and printed. And there's the um, Raspberry Pi here, um, and the, uh, that's the, the driver for the screen. It has, right now it has a, a one gigabyte SSD, one terabyte SSD, which is probably overkill, but anyway, that's that's the target. Uh, we're not going to use that tonight as we can write our program on the desktop. Um, Yes, I got I got the whole tour. I, I I designed I designed this. It's it's just a basic triangle. I still need to work on finding a way to close this uh, here, uh, and I need to close this um, and still be able to um, power the the Raspberry Pi here. So I, I will need some holes there. Um, there's a, a fan here, but I think I'm gonna uh, leave some holes on the back for. Uh, for um, you know um, the uh, air, air cycling, um, and yeah, so that's that's gonna be the the goal is to have that run the the client run on this, and of course there's gonna be a, a server part on um, the machine that runs OBS because ultimately what what a, a stream deck or a streamberry as I called mine uh, it, it use is 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 to control stuff and it's going to control uh, for me it's going to be to control obs uh so i i think i don't own i don't own one but i think a regular um stream deck connects to the pc via usb and then you can configure stuff and they the, the buttons light up and stuff like that i'm going to try and do something like that except it's not going to be connected via usb it's going to be connected via the network which means that the client part that I'm going to write for the Raspberry Pi might not be the only client that, you know, will exist. I can uh, write uh, an app for my iPhone or for an Android phone and have that connected to the network and use the same uh, same protocol and same uh, uh, to, to control my um, my OBS. So uh, hopefully that's, uh, that's, that's going to be what uh, we're going to have uh, in the end. So a few questions. Um, why? I think the first question is why? why? Why should I try and do that? Because there are already existing stuff. There are already apps uh, on, on various uh, brand of phones that can do that. It can connect to OBS. There's something that is called, I think it's StreamPy, uh, which already exists. So why try and, and write one myself? Well. There are two reasons for that. Two very good reasons for that. One is because I can. <laughs> Just because I can. Um, yeah, I, I, I like to understand how software works. So I'm not I'm not saying I'm not gonna use StreamPy or or any other uh, in the end, but I like to understand how it works. Just for you know, just to realize that uh, it's very hard to do and then I know it's hard and I know how it kind of works and, I, and then I use something else or, you know, I just realized that I can do it myself. Uh, so yes, one, because I can. 
and two, because what's the fun in not not trying stuff, right? I'm a software developer in in real life, and that I mean that's that's what uh, you know gets me running. So um, let's uh, let's 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 try also try this new layout that I've been working on. Let's bring the chat, see if my integration with stream elements works. Let's go and see the chat. Yes, it does. It does work. Yes, I do exist in real life, Monica. <laughs> it's not. It's not a bunch of lies. <laughs> it is not. Um, yeah, so what what I'm going to do tonight is just I'm going to just try and connect the two parts that are going to be at the heart of this um, this uh, thing, this stream berry. But let's let's put ourselves in in the situation of um, the end user. Um, you download a piece of software, you put the server on the machine that runs OBS. And you put the client on your uh, Raspberry Pi, and then you know you have to connect the client to the server. So you need to figure out what what's the IP of the server and the port number, and then you have to change the configuration on the client so that it connects to the server. I I think that's that's doable, of course, but there are better ways to do that, and better ways are, for example. Uh, the the the, the uh, bonjour protocol, or I think it's uh, uh, I, I don't A V A H I or something like something like that. Uh, well, basically zero conf uh, uh, method of doing that. Um, and guess what? There is a Python library which is called Python zero conf, and what that does it uh, it provides a way for a server to register its uh, information and for clients to query uh, those informations. And then you install the software on the Raspberry Pi, you run it, and it automatically discovers the server and it connects to the server with no configuration. So as I intend to make a snap uh, for both the client and the server, the server, I'm not sure if, if that's going to be possible, but uh, at least for the client, then you get your Raspberry, your Raspberry Pi, you sudo snap install Streamberry client and run it, and that's it. No, 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 nothing else to do. So tonight I'm going to try and connect a little, very tiny little server to a very tiny little client using zero configuration. This is going to be on the same machine, of course, because I don't have two, two machines to do that. Uh, but it's going to be the same as if it was, uh, a, a, if they were two different devices. Holy bleep, I love this layout and the integration. Yeah, I've I've spent a few hours on this. Uh, uh, I've been playing with um, uh, GIMP and Natron and uh, KDE and Live to create those, uh, those stingers. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, Eric uh, asked me to stream to do a live stream to show how I did that. So I might might do that one day uh, in the uh, upcoming future. Hello, our programmer. How are you? Thank you for stopping by. Right on time for the uh, you know for getting down to business. So let's switch to the full screen view. There we go. And here, here is the um, Python zero conf library I was talking about. I uh, don't know if you can read that. Let me bring it, put that a little bit bigger. So Python zero conf, I'm not going to read that. You can just go python zero conf.readthedocs.io. I will put a link in the show notes. You can read all about it. Basically, it provides uh, an API for servers to register a service. Uh, well, for the, it provides a, a way to register a service and then a way to uh, query information about that service. So that's what we're going to use tonight. OK, let's uh, let's see. Do we have a? Yes, we have a Visual Studio Code. Of course we do. 
Okay, we're going to create uh, some folders, some project folders. Uh, let's create that over there. Uh, um, let's uh, say, uh, I don't know, or Streamberry right now. That's going to be good enough. And yeah, well, we already had a Visual Studio code, so let's not start another one. File open folder. Uh, Computer and dev and SB. All right. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do some Python, of course. Yeah, nice visual. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're going to have a server and a client. So let's have a server file. And that's going to be our bash file that's going to run the whole thing for us. So that's the uh, bash. My microphone, my microphone is not placed correctly. Okay, that's been bash. Okay, and we're going to run Python 3 and we're going to go into src and server.py, which doesn't exist right now, but we're going to create that very soon. And we're going to have a client too. And the client is going to be bin bash. And we're going to run Python 3 src client.py, of course. And we need to switch the X byte uh, flag on this schmod plus X client and sub. Right. Okay. Back to Visual Studio. Don't need that anymore. We're going to create an, a source directory. We're going to create a client.py and we're going to create a server.py. Ooh. There we go. Go away. We have uh, made progress. Let's start with the server, okay? If main what's equals name. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean a problem has occurred during the activation of I don't know what? Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, if main equals equals name, so what what are we going to do? Um, typically, a server will uh, create a server socket. So that's what we are going to need if we want to be able to do some server stuff. Okay. Um, how do we do that? I think we need to import socket. Uh, and we need to create said socket. Socket equals socket dot socket. So far, that's not very complex. Uh, that's basic stuff. AF, INET, and uh, SockStream. Socket.SockStream. Okay. That's going to create a socket for us. We need to bind to that socket to make that a server socket. Uh, uh, and that's where I am a little bit fuzzy. I think 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 connect to. We listen on every interface and I need to I need to see what what does bind do. Uh, address onion address or bytes. Uh, let's, I don't remember. I think if I put zero here, it will try and find a random um, a, a free port somewhere. Oh, Devly. Hello, Devly. Don't be shy, say hello. We need to get Unix some fun follower al alerts. Yeah, uh, it was supposed to work. It was working uh, from the um, from the stream element testing. Uh, it didn't work on the stream, unfortunately. I have no idea why, but oops. Uh, let's see if I go there. 
if I go to stream elements, I can show you that I, it, it, it was supposed to be working. Uh, oh, did I? Well, no, it's not going to work because I'm an idiot. That's why it's not working. That's why it is not working. That's because I forgot to add the... That's what I need. I need to add... I, I'm doing that off screen, but I'm going to add a brother... Brother? 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 brother I don't know. I, I never could pronounce that word. Stream elements. Element alerts. There we go. And... Uh, now I'm going to need to go there and there. Uh, that's that's live stream, first live stream. You know, it's always it's always a problem. 1920 by 1080. Uh, control audio via OBS, 60 frames, and remove all CSS and go. And now, if I go to emulate, follow event. There we go. That's what you were supposed to see when they've uh, followed. So followed, yeah. Anyway, uh, next uh, next person to follow or uh, or like or do something, there should be an alert an alert somewhere. By the way, uh, Monica, you are a moderator on this channel, so you can kick anyone out of this channel except me, and you are not allowed to kick Dave because. Only me can kick Dev. That's the rule. Wherever we are, only me can kick Dev. Okay, so we have um, here we have bound, binded, binded. Yeah, I don't know. Some someone who speaks English will tell me. <laughs> uh, we have um, binded our socket right here, um, and now we want to do. What, what do we want to do? We want to listen. We want to listen to that socket. Otherwise, it's not going to be very useful. So we we want to have only one uh, backlog. So there's only one connection at a time because we are lazy and we don't want to do multi-threading at the moment. And then we're going to get the real IP and port number from uh, the socket. Uh, and it's going to get, give us our its name and IP. And we're going to check something that I am not very sure. Uh, print, okay. F IP equals, and that's the IP address. And port equals, and that's gonna be our port number. Right. Let's see if I was able to write, uh, what's that, nine lines of Python without error. Don't don't underestimate me. I can make mistakes in nine nine lines. For example, that is not oh, that is working because again I'm an idiot. No, I'm not really. I just uh, I just go too fast. I think that's print and print. There we go. And F. okay. All right. Hmm, IP is a function. That's not that's not what I expected. Uh get suck name is supposed to give me the IP. Or is it? Oh okay. No. I told you I could make errors in nine lines of Python and that was there were two there we go ip 0000 port is 37075 what is important is that ip is 0000 which means the socket should listen on all interfaces so not only the local 127001 but also all, all of them and it's IP list now. Well, if config yes so you can see I have a bunch of IPs here. I have uh, my work 
uh, VPN, I have my local network address, I have the local address, I have uh, a QMU network interface, I've got another VPN here, so a bunch of uh, addresses. Okay, that's working. Now we need to go to the uh, Hello, Haxmany. Welcome to the channel. Uh, we need to we need to do this uh, zero conf zero conf uh, magic here. So let's go back to uh, Visual Studio Code and also to the documentation of the register service. That's what we want, and it takes a service info as a parameter, and everything else seems to be optional. We like optional stuff because well we don't need to uh, we don't need to, to write those the classic macOS UI is still throwing me off <laughs> is that just in OBS um it's um uh, let's go back to let's go back to the uh, chat window it's a layout that I made uh, using uh, various open source software uh, and uh, I thought I was looking for something, uh, some some kind of layout that that I would, you know, enjoy. And I I went through about hundred of them, and uh, I was not happy with that. And then I found a screen cap, or I don't know if it's a legit one or if it's a, if it was a reconstructed uh, one, but of of the uh, the gem, or I think I don't. I think it's the gem, the graphic environment manager. And I thought, ooh, that looks nice. Let's do something in quick and easy. And three days later, and a bunch of hours fiddling with uh, Natron, GIMP, and KDN Live. There it is. It's not finished yet. I'm, I'm missing the uh, stream as ended screen. I just realized that uh, earlier. And so. It's not really working, but well, it, it is working. But it's gonna miss the the the, the last screen. <laughs> I, I, you know, over a skill. I, I I don't think this is really skill. It's just me, you know, trying stuff. And I I, I really I I'm pretty sure I don't need Natron to do that. I'm pretty sure you can do that in Kitty and Live, moving masks and putting keyframes. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can make a switch shutdown sequence. Um, I don't have a startup sequence either, so I don't know. I, I think just a stream as ending uh, as ended uh, screen will be uh, enough. Anyway, back to our subject. Uh, we're going to use register service, and we need a service info. Okay, so that's zero com. Uh, Visual Studio, where are you? There you go. Um, we probably need to import zero conf somewhere at, at, at the time, at some point. Huh. Maybe I should have uh, looked at the doc before. Um, yeah, it should be zero conf. Okay, let's see that. Uh, I do have a window somewhere with my it <laughs> because uh, yeah I kind of tested stuff okay you uh, where are you again last from zero boom. import service in all right so we need a info equal Goals. Service info. What does service info need? Where are you service info? Where are you service info? There it is. Okay. Um, why am I looking at my own stream? I don't need to look at my own stream <laughs> while I do this. Uh, we need a Type, which is a string, a name, which is a string, a port, which is, which is optional, but we we have one. 
Um, lots of stuff. Type fully qualified service type name. Okay. A link but it doesn't link to anything name fully qualified service name port white priority property server fully qualified name of for service host default name okay host, you know, address and past address list of ip addresses it has byte network at most one of those parameters at most one of those parameters can be provided okay okay i can i could look at what i've done previously but uh, let's let's say we need a type um, I have no idea let's say and uh, then we need a name very uh, server why not um now we need the what, what did they say Addresses, I think we need addresses. Yes, because we want to, we want our client to get the address and the port number. So that's the two things we need to add in there. The client, the, um, the address and the port number. Okay, let's do that. Let's just, so we need to add addresses equals uh, what what's that IP? Okay, maybe I don't know. Uh, port equals port. I think that's that's it. Uh, and we need to register the service. Zero uh, point service. That's not what I want. I want to go zero point zero two. Ah, okay. So I need to instant to an instance of that and then call that. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, zero boom, equals zero. Boom. Pretty sure I need to import that. And then I need to put zero point dot register service. Something like that, I believe. Uh, and I need to pass the info. Um, we'll see what happens. Okay. Type stream based server must end with .tcp.local or .udp.local. Thank you for telling me. Uh, we're going to do that right now. Uh, which one was that? Streamberry server. Okay. Okay. Why not? Let's do this again. Uh, service name Streamberry must start with underscore. Okay. Why didn't you tell that right above? Hmm? Instead of telling me in, in two, uh, two times. Uh, two times? In. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, let's do that again. Uh, oh, service name must start with an underscore. What? Service name Streamberry server must start with an underscore. What, what did I do? Oh, I didn't. I didn't change the correct one. And now it must be less than five bytes. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, which one? Service name, Streamberry Server. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I see? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ah, oh, that's, that's too much. Okay. Um, Streamberry. Uh, how how long is that? Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's too much. That is too much. Okay, so let's go with streamberry.tcp.local. 
bad type in name exception. Bad type in name exception. Ah, I'm gonna have to look at my cheat sheet. Okay, so what did I do last time? I did. Oh, okay, I did this. Yeah, different. I, I agree with Dev. Different errors means it's progress. And the fact that there's an error proves that it works because you know it could it could very well not work at all and don't say anything. So that's what I wrote last time. The name is Streamberry TCP local and the no the type is that and the name is that. I guess the name needs to get the type. All right, let's try again. Okay, progress, progress. Uh, type of address must be bytes. Got zero 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 int. Convert string addresses with socket dot init p to n. Okay. Okay. Socket dot p to n. P to n. Uh, init p to n. Okay. Okay. In HP2, it takes exactly two arguments. Oh, all right. Hmm. Socket.if init. Uh, addresses must be bytes. Got that. Hmm. I know. I know. I think I know. I don't know if I know. But. We know that IP is. Uh, oh, uh, that's that's an array. Addresses. It's an array. Okay. Ah, much better. There we go. Well, it doesn't do anything because um, because we're not waiting for anything. We're we're, we're not waiting for a connection or anything. Uh, so, it's supposed to be working, and we need to figure out a way to test that. Uh -huh. So, what should we do with our server now that it's, uh, now that it's um, properly configured? We have the IP address, we've got the port number, we've got our service uh, registered. Uh, so what are we going to do now? We're going to, well, we're going to do what server does. We're going to have a, uh, make, um, do a, an infinite loop, listen for something coming on the socket and write hello world because you know what? <laughs> yes, Dave, I agree with Dave. And I can say that because we're not on our usual podcast. So <laughs> there you go. I, I will never admit to agreeing with you on the on our show, you know, not when I have you uh, face to face. Uh, well, the webcam to webcam. <laughs> Hello, Trot Twitch. Welcome to the channel. Actually, you really need a good pro. Yes, I think um, you know if you want to. Uh, get better to uh, uh, in, in anything. Uh, if you want to get better at, at a programming language or at, at uh, in anything, it helps to have a, a real project. Um, not that you know, doing tutorials and stuff don't help. Uh, but really, if you if you can just get out of the code that is given to you on the internet and and have to think. But okay, I need exactly that, but not not copy paste that. I need to think about it and replace some variables and maybe some function calls and stuff like that. Then that's where you learn stuff, I think. And I also think the most important thing is not necessarily to learn to do everything by heart, but just to know that it exists, because then we are lucky. Uh, right now, we are lucky that to have. Google and and well, other search engines are available. Um, to you know, you remember, you know, I know how to do. I know we can do this. So let's ask 
our search uh, preferred search engine and it will uh, remind me how to do that you know back when i started it was a long time ago we didn't have internet like that so we have books actual books with pages yes we did, we had that and so we, you had to first read the freaking book and then um learn the um the uh how do you call that the the, the index table at the end to to remember okay i know i've read that in that book where it is no monica that was not patrick stewart's impression <laughs> yes i i i have i have done and i'm still doing some cool project uh, to develop my python skills so i guess monica that's that's the uh, the cue for uh, advertising the other uh, thing <laughs> So on, on YouTube, I'm doing a series of stream uh, where I uh, feature the um, rebuilding of the software boutique for Ubuntu Mate that hopefully is going to be on 2010. 2110. 2010. 2110, yeah. Creating clip is a nightmare. What do you mean, Dave? Creating clips is a nightmare on on Twitch? I just finished a course on a dead assembler language out of a book from the 80s. Very thankful for a language with search results. Yeah, assembler is never dead. I mean, you 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 can learn learn a ton of thing by studying how a Z80 or a 6502 work. Those are basic microprocessors, eight bits. They have like four registers, and it's it's amazing the stuff you can learn by by looking at those and they are very simple and you can find or write your own emulator for that and there are lots of uh, of, of um, assemblers that exist and you will learn a ton of stuff and lots a lot of that is still is still uh, uh, true today uh, for those, those uh, ARM chip or you know Ry um, Ryzen Ryzen AMD AMD something I, I don't even know the name of those uh, right now but it's the same principle you know fetch decode execute basically so that that's that's do your your basic stuff and then you've got your upcodes and stuff like that. so uh, learning a, a, an assembly um, an assembler language. Even an old one like a Z80 or a 6502, it will teach you a lot of stuff. You will learn a lot of stuff in that. Um, and once you once you get to a higher level language, and I, it doesn't matter which one, the language isn't the problem when you start. You know when you start programming. Sometimes people tell me, "Oh, I, I can program in C. I can program. I can't program in Python or I can't do Java." Yes, you can. If you can't, if you can program in C and you can't program in another language, then it, you're not, you don't know how to program. You just know the syntax of the C language. That's all. But if you know how to program, if you know how to resolve problems in your head and translate that to code, you can do that in any language. Spend an, uh, an hour or two learning the syntax for that language, and there you go. Anyway, <laughs> back to um, to what we were doing. So we're going to do what servers do. So we're going to print hello world okay um let's do stuff like this while true because why not and uh, true in python is written with a, a capital t uh we need to do, 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 do. we need to accept a connection from our socket uh what does that give us Come on. It gives us a socket and a return address. So connection, that's the client socket. We're going to call that client. Client and address, which I don't think we're going to use. We're going to accept that. And uh, oh, yes, we're going to do that. We're going to use that because we need to read from. from no, we are going to read from the client, not from the address. So if I remember pro properly, we do that. That so that we don't have to close 
the client socket. It's going to do that for us. Uh, and we have that. We're going to read. We're going to read some data. Uh, client. I'm kind of doing that out of my memory, which, as everybody knows, is not as accurate as I would love it to be. Uh, and we're going to, yes, we're going to read like, I don't know, uh, 2048 bytes. That's a random number that I just picked at the, out of the top of my head. Uh, if we don't have any data, we're going to break out of this infinite loop and we're going to serve the next uh, request. Uh, and then uh, what? Uh, let's print data. I guess it's it's something. It's a server. Okay, and we're going to maybe do that. If I remember. Yes. Uh, is it? Yes. We don't want. Oh, I don't know. Let's. We will see. Finally. Finally. Print uh, igniting. Just in case we need to make sure. And uh, and and what? Um, I think we can do something like sys that exit zero. Uh, that's not very clean. Uh, hopefully, it's not gonna leave anything dangling and take up some resources. But if it does, then I reboot after the stream, so that's okay. Dave said, the important thing about learning anything new is having a reason or practical use for learning it. That way you're learning for a purpose rather than just picking up theory that you're not actually applying to something. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay, so we have a server there. Let's uh, see if that server... Okay, we're going to... Okay. Uh, uh, we're going to run our server. And our server does nothing. Which is good which is what we want. Now we want to connect to that server. We're going to write the, the client path for that. Okay, let's go there, the client path. If main equals equals name. Oh, okay, good. That's a good start. Um, let's think for a moment. We need to go back to the um, to the the API and what what do I want in this API? I think that's this one. Returns network service information for a particular name and type, or none if no service matches by the timeout, which defaults to three seconds. What does it take? It takes a type and a name. Okay, we have that. We have the type and the name that we have uh, set up in our server. So let's go back and cheat and copy and paste those stuff. Because, you know, the more copy paste, the less code we have to write. <laughs> and that's okay. It's our code. You know, it's not like it's um, Stack Overflow driven development or anything. From from zero point import uh, zero because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need that and I'm going to need a zero conf instance zero conf equals zero conf and I'm going to have to call that function that I already forgot the name of get service info okay get service info and it needs the type and it needs the name and that's it what does that return that returns a service info great so that's service info well we can i guess we can already print this service info and see if our client sees anything uh, let's run the client from there Oh, look at that. The client, without any configuration whatsoever, just discovered that 
a service of type this and of name this is bound to IP address 0, port 35871. Good. I think I think it's a success. So what do we do with this information? Uh, that's uh, yes, Dave. It is. It is beautiful. It is beautiful because, as I said at the beginning of the stream, you don't have to configure anything. You just put your client on any device in your on your network, run the client, and it will find the service and the server. And the server. Um, I don't know if you were there when I, uh, I wrote the thing, but the server binds to 000 with a port zero, so it will find a free port. And then it puts, the, the beauty of this is that it will put the, 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 the IP address and the port number it's listening to in the service info, which our client can then get. Which means when we restart the server, it probably will run on another port. It would still work next time the, the server uh connect so that's uh yeah that's great i like that all right uh let's see uh something uh we need now to what do we we, we want to connect to that uh hmm. how do i get the oh i know that's the IP, that's the port. I don't know why I put that in, in, in variables, but anyway, I'm going to create a socket now. So we need to import socket, import socket. I'm going to create a socket, so well, socket, socket, dot socket, uh, socket, uh, dot af init socket dot uh, live stream? No. Just never remember. I can socket sock stream. There we go. Okay. Uh, and then suck dot connect. Uh, and then that's IP and port. Is it? I think. I think it is. Uh. uh Yes, probably. Uh, and I'm I'm I'm, ha I'm having a look at my cheat sheet because. Uh, yes. I don't remember how to write to a socket. Python write. Thank you, Internet. Uh, you noticed I'm on Python 2.7, am I? Yes, I am, but it also works with Python 3. Oh, no, I'm not, actually, because I think in client I said Python 3. But Maybe Visual Studio is in Python too. Yeah. So let's do this and go to three. There we go. Now we're in Python three. Uh, okay. Well, there's lots of stuff in the chat that I've missed, and so because it's code and chat, let's go back to chat, and it gives me another excuse to show off my layout. <laughs> um. Monica said, my husband started and still is an amazing scripter. Even that is moving into software development. Yeah. Where to go? Oh, we need to, we need to, uh, totally, completely off topic. We need to get uh, Mr. Monica on the show, Dave. Remember, remember, remind me. We need to set that up for next week. Um, what we said, not very cool when we have a firewall, right? Well, this thing is not intended to be run from the internet. It's intended to be run from inside your network. So you probably don't have a firewall 
between the machines on your own network. But yes, I do agree. It won't work behind a firewall. Ooh, multiple Python version. Yes, because, you know, uh, some stuff are still only compatible with Python 2, unfortunately. Even though Python 2 has been deprecated for years. Um, but, you know, reminds me of a certain distro that dropped 32-bit uh, support after like 10 years of deprecation warning and uh, still, you know, it, it provoked a, an explosion of uh, <laughs> of uh, people being very uh, sad. But anyway, I was running Python 3, uh, only the, uh, the interpreter in Visual Studio Code was uh, set to Python 2, so that's okay. Uh, -da. Dave says, love those transitions. Yeah, next week. Yeah, next week, Dave. Uh, thought we have a show next week. I mean, we didn't have a show this week, so we're going to have a show next week, right? Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yes, you do, Monica. You do. Dave says, yes, so that's the, the, the thing I was uh, searching, uh, you know, trying to remember. A-V-A-H-I. I don't know how to say that. Is it Avahi? Have a high? I don't know. It sounds like uh, it sounds like a, 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 one of those songs from the nineties. Uh, the, the, this band from somewhere in uh, Eastern Europe. Um, don't remember. MDNS bonjour zero conf is only designed to operate within the accessible local network. Yes, yes, agreed. Uh, the server broadcasts the service locally. Yes, that's fine. Have a he? Yeah, have a he. Yeah, okay. I use LXD and all my LXC in a single network. There are all firewalled. I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing for containers when you don't know what... Well, not when you don't know, but when you didn't build the container yourself. Yes, it is a good idea to have your containers firewalled. I agree. I agree. But here we're talking about a software that we are writing. Well, I am writing especially to be used on the local network and with the idea that there's going to be a client and a server on that same network and this, the client needs to connect to the server without configuration so that's that's what that's the the, the 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 basic so of course if your if all your machines are firewall then that's that's not going to interest you de rien de rien Right, let's go back to our uh, code. We need to finish this. Uh, what's uh, what's? I don't know if OBS tells me for, uh, for how long I've been streaming. Oh yes, fifty-five minutes. Okay, so I need to finish this in about uh, ten fifteen minutes because uh, by nine thirty p.m. UK time, Dave is going to host his weekly music podcast called the Buckcast. If you want to listen to good Creative Commons music, uh, and sometimes uh, not Creative Commons, uh, yeah, you can head over to thebuckcast.org slash live and uh, you will find all the information to join us on Telegram uh, and, uh, and have fun listening to the music. So let's finish this. Otherwise, Caroline is going to kill me. <laughs> Right. Um, how do I write to a socket? That's that's what uh, that's where I was. Uh, socket programming in Python, and you can see that I've already visited this page before. It's, uh, it was in a, a nice bur Burgundy. Uh, I want to write to that socket. Echo client and server. Echo server. I don't need the echo server. I need the echo client. Uh, echo client. That's that. Okay. I need, I'm connected and I need to send. Yes, let's send all. Okay. Now let's go back to our Visual Studio code. Uh, socket. Let's send all, and I need to send. Oh, why not hello world? Actually. So what do we have here? We have a. We have an instance of zero conf. We get the um, info. So we've seen that we actually got the information. We get the IP and port from the service info. We create a client socket. Well, we create a socket. 
then we connect that socket to that address IP, uh, that IP address and that port. I'm mixing French and English. It's horrible. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can follow me. Uh, and then I send hello world to that socket. And now if you remember on the server side, we are doing this. We are waiting, we are accepting a connection and then we are receiving 248 bytes max uh, from the client. Uh, and then if we didn't get any dat data, then it's the end of the transmission. We break out of this infinite uh, of this loop and then we're going probably going to wait for the next uh, client to connect or the next ne next request uh, to arrive uh, and before that we print the data so um, on our server window we should see hello world let's do this client nope service info has no attribute ip oh yes of course it's not ip it is let's we go to see if we're looking in the server thing it's addresses and it's gonna be addresses of zero probably probably what do you mean no suggestion oh yeah that's that's probably what he said when when it started said it had problems so it's not auto completing oh, well that's okay we can do that by hand for now uh Try again. Host must not contain null character. Okay. That's not what I was expecting. Uh, did I write that correctly? Yes, host port. Host port. What did I do? What happened if we have two servers with the same server name in the same network? The client runs two server. Yes, so uh, zero conf, MDNS, stuff like that. They are um, they are um, uh, designed so that you can have multiple servers with the same server name, uh, server, uh, ser same service type and service name for redundancy. And from what I can recall, from what I've read the first one to answer uh, gets to the client it's either that or the client gets multiple uh, answers i don't exactly remember but it's not a problem it is um it is designed to be redundant so you can have two servers two physical servers with the same service type and service name and if one uh, crashes then the other takes over or if uh, one answers before the uh, the, the other and you know the, maybe they can load balance maybe they're on different um side of a switch for example and so one will answer faster to some devices and the other will answer to some other devices uh, but it's, uh, it's okay it's not a problem and actually i intended when everything is working i intend to test that and have two two clients uh, in this case, uh, connect to uh, the servers, and then I will try one client and multiple servers to see how it works. <clears throat> because it's not it's not impossible that you would have two different OBS running on the same network. Maybe I, I should have like a configuration on the server side where the service name would change depending on the uh, the host name of the machine that could be a solution and then we could have a simple GUI on the client uh, to show okay I've got responses from two servers ser servers which one you want to connect to we'll see uh it, in the meantime it said it's not working and I'm sad I am sad ah we 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 did we did some trickery here and that we change in a P2N. Maybe we need to do a inet 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 N2P. Ah, 
yeah well same same thing suck dot af inet you say inet or inet for that dave you're the official english speaking representative here you represent the whole english speaking community how would you say that Would that also work if you wanted to have two Streamberry devices controlling the same OBS, for example? Yes, it should be. It should work. The way I've, I see things, you know, uh, it's the the client will only. I am not decided yet, but I think uh, let's bring back the chat because I'm chatting and I'm not coding and it's getting ridiculous to see a, a not moving screen. The way I see things, I haven't decided yet. Should the client connect to the server and maintain the connection? Which, you know, on one side makes for faster exchanges, but on the other side means I need to have some kind of reconnect mechanism in place in case the connection is lost. Or do I connect to the server each time I want to send uh, a request I'm not I haven't decided yet if we go the uh, connect each time route then it's not a problem to have multiple clients because the client will connect send the request and then disconnect and the, the server doesn't really need to know which client did the request if we go with a permanent connection, persistent connection, and I need to store a, a list of connected clients. Uh, I also need on the server side to send you know, some, some kind of pings to establish if the, to see if the, the connection is still uh, valid. And, and so it, on one hand, it brings speed, but it also brings a lot of problem. So I'm not sure uh, how I'm going to do that. Right, let's go back to the full screen. Otherwise, you know, the podcast is going to start late. Oh, wait. It usually starts late anyway, so... Okay, I'm good. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's see. And uh, the stock is not different. Okay, so that's better. Uh, but where is... Which one is, is not defined? Line 7. Ta -da! There we go. Wunderbar. We have our hello world. Our client sent a request to our server. And the server handled the request. Well, okay. It did that by printing the command on, on, on the console. But without any configuration on the... Um, on the client side, we have successfully connected to a server. We have uh, uh, sent data to the server and the server under that, I, I, I think it's a success. Uh, it's not much, I, I agree, it's not much. It's just a few lines of Python, but to be honest, uh, last time I tried that, it didn't work. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm 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 very uh, I'm very pleased that it did um, work. So I'm going to stop now. So I give um, Devas time to get ready for uh, for the podcast. Um, on the schedule, if you were not with us yesterday on the YouTube stream, um, this weekend Big Pod is planning on streaming something about his uh, package manager. I think next Monday. Uh, Monica community time in this uh, in this uh, channel is going to stream a game of cats and uh, machine learning so head over to the twitch.tv uh, slash community time I will put a, a link in the uh, uh, in this uh, video's show notes I also have the uh, Monica's channel featured in uh, uh, below this video uh, I will be back on YouTube next Thursday 
for the part five of the software boutique 2.0 and i'm going to probably be back here in two weeks or maybe sometimes earlier um i can't do that next uh, friday because uh, of family obligations but i will find uh, i will find a, a day where i can stream the next steps for this uh, DIY stream deck, the stream berry. Uh, if you like my uh, my content, uh, subscribe to this channel. I don't know if, if you have if you need to activate notification. I don't know squat about Twitch, as uh, you can see. It's my first time, so I guess people can subscribe or follow. I don't know how you say that here. Um, and uh, if you can activate notifications or or not, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Follow. Okay, so follow. If you like this content, I will be streaming more content like this and probably some other stuff like, you know, 3D printing projects, electronic stuff. Um, if I, if I, well, I, to do that, I need two things. One, oh, thank you, Trust Witch. Um, one, I need to uh, clean this desk because if I want to have an over overhead camera, you don't want to see the mess that is on this desk right now. You don't want to see that. Hey, Eric. Welcome. Ah, oh, well, you know, it's work. And I know it's uh, it was a little bit early for you. Thank you, Eric, for the follow. Uh, yeah, so... Um, uh, what, what was I saying? I don't even remember what I was saying. Uh, well, anyway, <laughs> it's the end of the stream. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, we uh, will be back uh, sometimes next week on Twitch with all kinds of stuff, but the next stream will be part two of Streamberry. Um, don't forget to uh, follow Monica, uh, Eric. Eric has a, a channel here on Twitch too, and a YouTube channel also uh, over there. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good evening or afternoon or whatever it is have a good weekend and uh, don't forget the podcast the talk slash live the show starts in about 20 something minutes and uh, i'll see you there and uh, you will have all the information to join us on on telegram and enjoy the show together thanks and as i said i don't have my um end of stream uh screen so i will revert back to the uh, black and white thingy uh, target see you bye bye cheers <laughs>